So we wanted to find the rolling resistance of the marble on the track. So we took uh, the marble that we intended to use and put it on a short section of track with an angle finder and rotated it until it started moving. We found that angle to be around 1.5 degrees. And so we just set up uh, a quick force analysis here where we have gravity pulling down on it and then broke the two vectors and then the rolling resistance would be equal to the sign of the force caused by gravity in this direction. So a rolling resistance would be the mass times gravity sine 1.5 and we've got a rolling resistance value out of that. Okay so this is our first set of calculations for our roller coaster. I wanted to solve for the initial velocity before the loop that'll tell us how much energy we need from our magnet Gauss gun thing. So to solve this, the first step was to find what the minimum velocity could be at the top of the loop for the ball not to fall. But we decided that because we determined rolling resistance based off of gravity, that the rolling resistance calculation would be off unless this had the same normal force applied to it as when it's on the ground. So we wanted to make the acceleration from going around this equal to 1g of force, basically 1g of acceleration, and to have the same normal forces on the ground. So to do that, we have our radius that we found for our loop, which it is an ellipse, so we took an approximation of the very top of the ellipse and found the best fit radius and used that, which is 105 millimeters, used our normal acceleration equation, used two times gravity as our normal acceleration, and we got a minimum velocity of 1.43 meters per second. So after getting that, we use that and our other variables, which are not variable, but our 700 millimeter height of our loop and our rolling resistance and our track length, because our force of rolling resistance multiplied across the length of track it travels will give us how much resistance to travel or negative work in that section. So I set up an energy balance and went through and did a lot of stuff here. But ended up getting 4.04 meters per second needed to get through the up into the loop without falling. That is all for the first section. So in the last video, we figured out that the velocity at the top of the loop needed to be 1.44 meters per second to overcome gravity and have the correct normal force at the top of the loop. So then that velocity becomes the velocity of this kinetic energy part of this equation right here. So you have like one half mv squared where that is the v and the v squared. This part is the work. So that includes positive work and negative work. And since it's for section three of the loop when it's going down and then back up on the ramp, this part is going to be positive work by gravity because it's speeding up the ball. And then you're gonna have negative rolling resistance because it kind of acts like friction, but it's also not friction. So it's gonna slow down the ball a little bit. And then when it starts going back up, it's gonna work against gravity. And then that's gonna be negative work. So you have to subtract all those from each other. And then this is just another kinetic energy part of the formula where you have one half mv squared. And when you solve for this squared, because all this is known values, the only unknown value is the v, or the velocity of this side. And that ended up being 2.84 meters per second, which is the velocity at the very end of our jump right before it takes off. So in the last part of the video, we found that the velocity at the start of the jump is gonna be 2.84 meters per second. So we knew that by the design of our ramp that it was at a 75 degree angle and we knew that the velocity was gonna be at the same angle. So using two um, constant acceleration equations, first finding the time it would take for the ball to return to the same height that it left the jump, and then using that time in a different constant acceleration equation to find the distance, we found that our calculated jump distance was gonna be 410 millimeters. Although as you'll see, 
in our actual video, the jump distance ends up being like 30 millimeters because there's many losses that we were unable to account for in our actual calculations. Okay, so we wanted to calculate the total uh, force and get the area under the curve of magnets to figure out the energy produced by the Gauss gun. And to do that, we wanted to see how much force it would take to pull the magnet off this ball bearing that we're going to use. So we 3D printed a little jig where the ball bearing sits inside of it and the instrum can pull up on it and then get a force reading. And then the magnet just sticks by magnetism to this flat surface right here because it's going to have more magnetism to the flat surface than it is the ball bearing. And we got this beautiful graph here that we can now calculate how much force per uh, distance away from the magnet. Yep. Okay, so now knowing our required initial velocity, I wanted to figure out how many magnets we would need to accelerate it up to the speed we need. And to order the magnets to begin with, unfortunately, magnets are really complicated and I could not figure out a great way to find the power needed from the magnet. So I decided to just use other parameters and hopefully get close. We needed a 19 millimeter diameter magnet, which narrowed it down. And I wanted to do a neodymium magnet because they're pretty strong. And then the thickness was the only variable. Ended up with 6.35 millimeter or quarter inch because of this graph right here, very scientific. Shows the price of the magnet uh, relative to the magnet thickness. As, as you can see, it gets really, really expensive past 6.35 millimeter or quarter inch. So that's why I went with that, and I hoped I could just have enough magnets to figure it out. But then once I had the magnets in hand, we did the calculation on the Instron to get the work that one magnet would do. And this ended up working out. So after taking our T1 plus U1 to 2 equation, we arranged to solve for a velocity with the variables being the work of the magnet, which is now known, and the number of magnets, and then the mass of the marble, which is unknown. So we're able to figure out with two magnets, we should be able to get a velocity of 4.63 meters per second, which should be a little bit more than enough. However, this was not even close to enough. We wouldn't make it over the loop. We actually ended up needing a minimum of five magnets, and we ended up with six for consistent results, which means we lost at least 0.44 joules. So there were quite a few losses we couldn't account for in the energy transfer between the magnets and the bearings. But this is what ended up working. So I wanted to talk about how we're launching this thing because we're not using a regular hill. We're using a Gauss gun, or to my best knowledge, that's what it's called. But it's a bunch of these permanent magnets in series. The idea behind it is when you put the first ball bearing here, it's ferrous, so it gets pulled into the first magnet. It smacks the magnet with that initial velocity from being pulled in, and since it sticks to it and you have a plastic impact, it transfers the energy to this ball bearing and then to this one. This one is far away from the magnet, and because magnetic field on a magnet, permanent magnet, goes down by the inverse cube, it's very weak out here, so it just breaks away. And then it gets pulled in rapidly with that initial velocity plus the extra force of being pulled from the next one. And then the force multiplies, and then it carries on in a chain until you get a very high velocity down here. And then at the very end, we have a regular marble. And that transfers all the energy to the marble, which then hopefully makes the loop but most of the time it doesn't. And also, it can uh, shatter the marble. As you can see, we uh, have a junkyard going of marbles. We also had to change the radius here. Very good. We also had to change the radius here to a shallower radius because we found out that the high normal force here was causing extra rolling resistance which made it not complete the loop, or at least we think it's rolling resistance that increased from the increased normal force. But anyways, here's, a, here's the Gauss gun firing. Gonna get a good shot. I just set it out here, 
and then it explodes the marble. So this setup for our, our track here was actually the calculated distance between the start of the jump and the end of the jump. As you'll see in the videos where we succeed in launching the marble and it actually lands the jump, it's much closer. Like it's, they're literally like almost on top of each other. And that's because there's a bunch of losses in the track and things we weren't able to account for that caused this distance to be so much less because there's so much less speed at the top of this ramp versus what we calculated it to be. Yes! yes!